Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Let's get right to the painting. Today we're going to start with our two inch brush, a bit of titanium white, and just the smallest dab of the Mars black. I want to show you how to make a very quick impression of a sunrise painting, a sunrise on the river I should say. And I want this impression to be a quick tutorial on how to block in a painting. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put in all of our shapes, all of our basic colors, sort of the basic colors that we want in our painting. At a later point we can go back and refine and add in all the details. This is just a quick impression of the painting. So it's not the full painting. I'm not doing the whole painting for you today. I'm just doing the first few steps on how to quickly get an idea onto the canvas so that you can work on it and work it out. I've added a bit of blue to my brush and then a bit of the darker black. I want to have some variation. We don't want it to all be the same color. So I'm going to quickly add a little bit more white and blend it all together using very, very quick motions. This has not been sped up at all. This is my actual speed for painting. And you can see that I'm using the same brush for this whole upper portion, that large two inch brush. I may in a minute grab a smaller one inch brush, but for right now, just using the old two inch brush to quickly put in all the paint there. But again, please note, that this is not the whole painting, just the first few steps. When you're using acrylic paint like I am here, we just want to get the basic colors down and then we can add in the highlights and the shadows and all the other things. So it's a great technique instead of trying to put in all the little details and getting kind of stuck. A lot of beginning artists get stuck. Don't worry about it. Get the overall composition, the overall shapes down. Get that looking right first. Then you can go back and fuss with the details. This composition is going to be fairly simple. It's not a very complex approach that I'm using here. Today, I am trying to show you the basics of this technique so that you can take it and use it in your own paintings, perhaps paintings that are more sophisticated, more complex in their perspective, in the details, and things like that. This blocking in method is great for acrylic painting, especially if you're using a layered technique. By that I mean you're letting each layer dry before you add the next one. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly anyways. And this painting methodology complements that drying aspect. Okay, I've gotten a little bit oversaturated with the white. I need to put in some darker colors, so I'm going to go back with some black. Lost some of that variation I had before, and that happens sometimes when you're painting. You can get very easily carried away, like I just did, with the overblending, so be careful about that. Painting is very forgiving. It's not that hard to just go back and fix something really quickly. So if you make a mistake or you overblend or what have you, just quickly grab some more paint, add a little bit more to it, and away you go. Don't worry about it too much. Don't feel like you have to make this perfect either. We're just trying to quickly get the overall impression down first. We can worry about the details at a later time. Grabbing some white, tossing in some clouds here. I am going to go back in a minute, brush these out a little bit so they're not so texturally active. Overall, I think that the sky should be fairly subdued for a sunrise. We don't want it to be too active. Note that I'm creating depth by having a larger section on the right, while getting smaller the further left that you go. I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas that I have primed with some red vermilion gesso. I really recommend that you use a primer like a gesso. The red is kind of a warm color and it'll add a lot of warmth to your painting. So when you're painting on white, it can be kind of cold and stark and harsh. I do occasionally paint on white and it works out okay, but if you can paint on a warmer, kind of neutral color, that can really add a vibrancy to your work. Okay, just figuring out some of these details here with the white, just pure titanium white there, using that smaller one inch brush, just dabbing mostly. Keep your brush work light, keep it active. Again, we're just trying to get the impression. Don't worry about making it look perfect. Get the overall idea in place first, and that's what this entire painting is about. Okay. 
kind of grab some of the cadmium yellow medium and add some titanium white to it and mixing that together then very nice creamy pale yellow. This will be the sunlight hitting the bottom of these clouds and creating a nice gradation. We're going to have this warm glow going on underneath here. Gradually adding more and more yellow as I move down. A bit more white at the top, kind of paler as it gets higher into those clouds, kind of making a nice gradation and a transition from the sky above into the yellow itself. Quick brushwork, not overthinking any of this, using my instinct and my gut, sort of putting it in very, very fast. It may not look like much right now, but each step will gradually bring the entire composition into focus and give you a clear idea of how to quickly, and that's the key here, quickly put a painting in front of you and then you can fuss with it and make it perfect and get it how you want it to be. I like paintings to be fast. I don't have a huge attention span. I get very distracted easily with the next thing and I'm always excited by the next new project so I have to work very quickly to get my idea down on the canvas and this is a great method and approach for doing so. Just fast and dirty, get it down, get it in front of you, and then you can take your time later on and get it to look even more pristine and how you like it to look. Grabbing some more cadmium yellow here, looks fantastic. Getting closer and closer to what I want. Taking the two inch brush, this is kind of a cool effect, very, very lightly brush over what you've already painted. It's okay if some of the white gets a little bit into that gray above. We're just going to quickly quickly smear this out. You can see that there's a couple extra strokes there of the white where it's kind of protruding. I'm going to take a clean brush and blend that out. No big deal. Very nice. Blending, blending, blending really quickly. And suddenly this has a nicer, softer look and feel to it as a sunrise should. When you get out there in the early morning as I have before on a river kind of standing on the riverbank, feel the coolness of the air around you. You look up to the sky and it's quite dark and the sun starts to break through and everything's very still and calm. This painting, which is done, of course, in my studio because I'm recording here, where I need good even light for the painting videos, tries to capture some of that feeling that I've seen standing out there in, in nature and watching the sunrise. Quite an experience. All right, taking some long horizontal strokes here, smoothing it out. I want everything to look pretty even, blocking in some tree shapes with some of that gray mix, just kind of figuring out where I want my tree line to be for this piece. Trying to work very fast, not overthink anything. I grab a little bit of the Mars black, a bit of the cobalt blue after that put down a cooler layer in the front here. So we're going to have all my warms that are going to be in the far back in that sky. And to complement and contrast that, we're going to have all the cools in the front. This is sort of a flipping of what you normally do. Normally in paintings, you put your cools in the back and you'll put your warms in the front. But here I'm going to flip it. Well, sort of. I'm going to cover it up with some of the green later on but it's going to create a nice base for that green and kind of make it darker and deeper looking. Grabbing a bit of the white here. Lightening this up a little bit. It's got a little bit too dark with that black. Smoothing it out, horizontal strokes using my larger brush there. Keep it relaxed, smaller brush here. Oops. Hope no one saw that. Oh well. See, that's why you put drop cloths down. If you drop your brush like that, <laughs> you're not getting paint on your floor. So having a drop cloth or an old rag or a, um, an old bed sheet or something like that will really save you some, some heartache later on. So make sure you put something on the floor if you're painting in, on carpet like I am. All right, um, taking that same brush, having some yellow in there. I'm going to brush that in real quick. Grab some of the white here, pure white. That's going to be where the river is. I'm kind of blocking it in now. Just a few strokes, you can already kind of see where I'm going with this painting. 
Doesn't take much. We're just trying to get the impression. All right, gonna grab some of that thalo green. Now, thalo green is not a color I usually use for trees, so I was just feeling adventurous and decided to use this bluish green. Normally, you would probably want to mix up something a little bit more realistic. You probably could use a mixture of the cobalt blue with the cadmium yellow medium, which will give you kind of a deep green, bluey green, but not quite so blue. Or you could use my favorite, really, is the Mars Black plus Cadmium Yellow Medium. That'll give you kind of an olive natural green, and that's more what you're going to want to use. Here, though, I'm having fun with color and sort of just allowing my imagination go and trying out new things. Sometimes you find that a new color can give you a new perspective and give you kind of a new challenge to use this Thalo Green. On top of that, I have a whole tube of it, and I haven't used very much of it, so I thought, well, where can I use this color more? Anyway, take a little bit of the cadmium yellow, brush in a few highlights here, very quickly working. You can see that gray behind those trees sort of acts like an instant mist. Instant mist, I could call it. That's why I put the gray in first, so that way when you paint your trees over it, you can have them kind of disappearing into that mist. I, um, as I go further along in this painting, kind of defining that hillside there, I may go ahead and add in more trees or change some of the details, but right now we're just trying to get this down as quickly as possible. My idea was to get this done within 15 to 20 minutes and just try to quickly put it in. There's a close-up here for you so you can see a little bit better how I'm pressing that bristle straight into the canvas, kind of dragging it along there. In those horizontal strokes and blending it out. Just trying to get it in as fast as possible. Now looking at this, I think I should put a few more trees in the far distance. I don't think I did do that right now, but after I'm watching this recording here, I think looking back I probably should have added a few more trees. So when I go back for the details at a later point, I may add a few more trees on that right hand side kind of extending out behind where I am putting that yellow right now it should be some more trees back there too oh well I didn't do that when I was recording so I don't have it there that's okay grab me some more white and cadmium yellow and blend that into that pure yellow I just put down blending this together not worrying too much about getting it too detailed just trying to get the overall impression like I said one way I could quickly improve this painting is to make the trees on the left bank a bit taller they're a little bit too short and if they were bigger it would look like they were a bit closer to the viewer grabbing some more of the yellow mixture with the white putting some highlights down on this river blending it together I could have left it how I had it with the very grainy looking white strokes I think that looked pretty good but adding a little yellow to it doesn't ever hurt so either way it would work out fine and suddenly, very quickly, I have a painting. And now it needs some work. There's a few things I would change with it. But you can see that now I have some places to go with it. And it didn't take me very long to get that figured out. So now I can add some trees in the foreground, kind of covering up some of the background there, push some of it back, add some bushes along this front hill, some grass. You could add more trees in the far distance all kinds of little details and things in here but to get started all you need to do is just get the basic idea down on the canvas and then you can let your imagination run wild and try all kinds of different things and different effects one of the great things about painting is that anyone can do it you can just go get some acrylic paint even some student grade paint works just fine Grab a canvas or two, get a few brushes, even some chip brushes like these are. And even with inexpensive brushes, you can get some really nice looking results and some nice paintings. If you're a beginning painter, this is a great video to check out. There's lots of other great artists on YouTube, so see what they're doing, get inspired, and Try different things. You never know what you can create until you try. All right, and that's it. 
How to block in a painting in under 15 minutes.